Welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. We bring you the right information to empower you, the SME entrepreneur, on this very special conversation tonight. Broadcast One presents Disruptors. I'm speaking with HFCL. I caught up with the chairman of the largest player when it comes to the telecom space, discussing fiber optic cable and fiber to the home, understanding how they've managed to stay at the forefront of an industry that's changed rapidly over the past two years and what what they're doing when it comes to the next revenue earner, data, take a lesson. taking the time to join us on this interview uh, and one of the fastest growing spaces of course is what's happening in the telecom industry and uh, as the largest player really when it comes to the communication space it's exciting to be chatting with you today I want to kick this off by asking you to talk to our viewers about the legacy really behind HFCL look you know we have been in telecom industry for more than two and a half decades we have been predominantly an equipment manufacturer now we have become not only equipment manufacturer but fiber optic cable manufacturer in a big way. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we do a lot of system integration where we buy equipment from others, put our equipment together and deliver as a complete solution to the customer. Sure. That is our business right sure, now. Sure, sure, sure. The industry, uh, the telecom industry, uh, you said uh, you've been in this space for uh, uh, two and a half decades, but in the last two and a half years, possibly the kind of changes that this industry has seen has been unprecedented. Uh, your views on you know, how that has been changing, what perhaps the biggest changes are, and how are you really preparing for those changes? Look, you know, there has been a huge disruption in, re in the industry in the last two and a half years. The reason is that you know, the earlier players did not upgrade their technology. Mm -hmm. So they left the space open for the new players to come in and introduce new technology, which was done by Reliance Geo. They came with 4G technology, which was capable of providing huge data connectivity to the customers. As a result of that kind of a technology and that kind of a capacity which was created by Geo, prices went down drastically. Hmm. Not that Geo is losing money, it's earning money. It's still able to provide services to the customer very cheap hmm. at a very reasonable price. As a result of that, technology adoption has been very good for 4G. Hmm. And most of the subscribers have migrated, prices have come down. But at least in terms of data connectivity, India has become one of the largest user of mobile data services in the world. It's number one now, mm -hmm. which was number 150th before Geo came in. Sure. That has been the kind of change. Okay. Price has gone down, okay. availability increased. Okay. So in the last two years, given the kind of change that the industry has seen, how have players like yourself really prepared for those changes? Look, you know, we being equipment manufacturers, mm -hmm. fiber optic cable manufacturers, we have to prepare ourselves with a change of technology in terms of networks. If the networks change, the technology which they use, they change, we have to change our manufacturing equipment or the cables which we do accordingly is to suit the current generation of requirement of networks. And we have done that very well. Sure. For example, fiber optic cables. We have started manufacturing cables with large count cables, up to 1,000 pair cables in one single cable. Mm -hmm. Similarly, fireproof cables long duration cables. These are the kind of cables we have started manufacturing. Mm -hmm. We have increased our capacity because with the increase in adoption of 4G, data requirement has gone up, so you need higher backhaul capability. We have increased our cap uh, production capacity of fiber optic cables by four to five times. Sure. As a result of this increase in capacity, we are able to serve our customers. With new products in fiber optic cable, we are uh, able to provide cable for new applications also. Similarly, in equipment manufacturing, we are introducing new equipment. We are coming out with new equipment, new solutions, sure. our own design, which will cater to the demand of current, current generation of networks. Okay. You, in fact, are uh, working with Geo, amongst others, but you are definitely at the forefront of working with them, aren't you? Yes, we are. Uh, Geo is one of our most valued customers. Mm -hmm. We are supplying fiber optic cables to them. 
not only supplying cables but rolling out their network also in North India, fiber optic cables, telecom towers and such things. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge business with Jio mm -hmm. and we are thankful to Jio uh, and their management to having reposed that kind of trust and confidence in HFCL. Okay, uh, let's talk about the big picture and the fact that uh, you are one of the front runners when it comes to this space and we started the conversation with that. But given how no one possibly anticipated that these are the kind of changes that are going to happen, how have you ensured that you're a disruptor? How are you innovating? How do you know that these are the future technologies that are going to come into the industry and that's going to change and therefore you need to innovate in that even before the market has changed? Look, I wouldn't call myself as a disruptor. Mm -hmm. Because disruption is something which is being done by operators today sure. by bringing in new technologies. Okay. But yes, we have to keep pace with the change in technology with the network guys are deploying. We always visit different shows, different exhibitions, read through journals. We understand our full team is there which is busy in understanding new technologies. And within those technologies, designing new generation of equipment sure. which are suitable for next generation of services. So as to we are not falling behind in technology, where we are able to offer to the customers equipment which are required by them, looking at their usage and their customers' usage. If the customer today needs high capacity data requirement, we are able to provide them equipment which caters to the that kind of a requirement. Mm -hmm. And not only they are happy, but their customers are also happy. That is our ultimate success. Okay, how are you able to innovate then in this space? How crucial is that for you? Because you're clearly, you know, constantly coming out with new innovations, but how do you as a company then go about doing that? Look, you know, innovation is a necessity in telecom. Yeah. If you don't innovate, you'll die. Yeah. So what we have got, we have got a full technology development team, R&D team, R&D partnerships. With those teams, once we know that what is the kind of equipment are required by networks, that team sits down, evaluates, what we can do among, within that requirement, and we try to design those equipment or do partnership with some other vendors, some other international players sure. for those kind of equipment and offer that to our customers. Okay, and the Indian market then you're saying is ripe for these kind of innovations at this point? Absolutely, absolutely right. Okay. Today operators have deployed latest technology things in India. Mm -hmm. So we, they need uh, really the latest technology equipment for the purpose of the kind of network they are deploying. Okay, uh, let's talk about your manufacturing facility. Like you mentioned, you are in the process of setting up uh, uh, a new manufacturing plant, but uh, manufacturing really is the core at what you do. You're increasing the kind of money that you're putting into your manufacturing facilities. We in fact had the chance uh, to go to your facility at Goa and see the kind of work that you're doing firsthand. Um, just run us through your manufacturing facilities and what sort of expansion plans you have there. Look, you know, we have a equipment manufacturing facility in Solan in Himachal Pradesh where we manufacture telecom equipment. We have a factory in Goa, where we manufacture fiber optic cables. Mm -hmm. That factory is capable of manufacturing about eight million fiber kilometers equivalent cable every year. Okay. Our subsidiary company, HTL, which is in Chennai, that has got another facility for manufacturing fiber optic cable. Uh, with the expansion currently going on in that facility, it will be capable of manufacturing 10 million fiber kilometer equivalent of cable sure. in that facility every year. Now we are putting up another factory in Hyderabad. That factory would not only be for cable, but it will also manufacture fiber, which is the major raw material for manufacturing cable. So that facility for fiber would be about 6.5 million fiber kilometer every year. Mm -hmm. And cable would be 10 million fiber uh, kilometer equivalent every year. Okay, and when so is that going to be complete? So all these three facilities put together, mm -hmm. we'd have a capability of almost 30 million fiber kilometer every year for cable. And that would be probably one of the largest in the country mm -hmm. and amongst the few large in the world. So I'm proud of that. We would be one of the few largest in the world for cable manufacturing. Uh, I want to talk specifically about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, even in the optic fiber space, one thing that is really picking up is the optic fiber and the fiber to home. That's becoming a huge market in India. How crucial is that? What are your views on that? How is that space really changing? So it's very crucial. The way the data consumption is increasing, the subscriber mm -hmm. wants high speed data. Mm -hmm and a lot of data because video consumption at home is increasing very heavily. People are going from uh, television channel to what they need to see, they want to see that. And that is video on demand or the different yeah. applications like Netflix and Amazon and all those kind of things. Now that kind of a speed requirement can only be met by fiber optic cable. Mm -hmm. So once fiber reaches to home, that is able to give you the ultimate speed to the customer. 
and that is a different level of satisfaction to the customer is in viewing television. That's one. But then it gives you convert services also, voice, video, data, yeah. conversions of uh, wireless and wireline put together. So worldwide FTTH in all developed countries has started happening. Mm -hmm. It has happened a lot already. Many countries have targets that uh, so many homes has to be connected by FTTH. Sure. Similarly, this has started in India also. Uh, Geo is another, you know, this is a leader in that. Geo is a leader in that. Uh, they have started rolling out. I understand their FTTH network in 1600 cities in the country. As HFCL, uh, we are being a supplier. We are working out the fiber optic cables, which are suitable for FTTH applications because they are specialized cables. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we are working on equipment, uh, which would be used as electronics equipment to give those FTTH connections. I'm going to slip into a very short break on that note, but we will continue bringing you highlights of this very special conversation with HFCL. That's on the other side. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. Tonight, continuing to bring you this very special conversation under the special series, Broadcast One Presents Disruptors. Uh, how crucial is the data market? Because that's a piece that uh, everyone wants now, you know, share of. And data is becoming the big thing. As a company that has access to and is so close to the data that's being generated, uh, perhaps your views on how that's going to change industry, how companies like yourself can maybe monetize Look, that. Look, data is the only market now. Okay. Voice is just an application over the data networks. Sure. And that is why you find voice has become free. Mm -hmm. And data, for you, data you pay some price. Sure. Data is very, very crucial in today's market. Any operator which has to succeed has to have a huge capacity of data network. That's what Geo did, that's what others are now following up. Mm -hmm. Now, from our company's perspective, uh, fiber optic cable being one of our major business, th that's absolutely necessary for, it is absolutely important for the service provider to fiber optic cable in their network if they want to carry huge data. Sure. Because so much of data is generated, it is not possible to carry that over microwave radios or any other media. You need fiber optic cable. So that's why we have expanded our capacity and producing fiber optic cable. Mm -hmm. Two, then at home, again you need high speed data. Fiber has come, but within the home the data has to be available on wireless to the subscribers on Wi-Fi. So high capacity Wi-Fi systems is another area which we are working on. And we are to come out with uh, our own Wi-Fi product a complete Wi-Fi network kind of a solution very soon in the market. Okay, uh, data and data security always go hand in hand. And uh, when you pose the question in terms of, you know, how you're securing the data that's being generated, uh, what do you have to say on that? Definitely data security is important. Uh, within the networks, operators own, uh, own network and within the country also. So whatever equipment we are designing, Wi-Fi systems example, that has got absolute firewalls so data cannot be going out from there. Mm -hmm. It just cannot go out. Okay. Uh, even as we were talking about the fact that uh, in the past two and a half years, we have seen the most amount of consolidation when it comes to the telecom players, newer players entering the space, the kind of expansion that we've seen. Uh, I also want to talk about the rollout of 5G. Yes, there's been a lot of conversation around that, but how are you preparing for that? Look, you know, uh, 5G rollout has to happen in India. Okay. I think it's about two years away. Uh, first, the government has to auction the spectrum for 5G, which they are talking about, and I believe sometime during this year they would be ready to auction that spectrum. And for 5G, again, you need uh, uh, equipment and again the fiber optic cable in a big quantity. Fiber optic cable, we are already prepared. We have done a huge expansion. Keeping in view this 5G and FTTH kind of requirement, then high capacity backhaul radios, we are looking at those kind of solutions. Wherever fiber is not there, those backhaul radios can be used for uh, uh, backhauling the data which would be generated by subscribers. So those are the steps we are taking. Okay, uh, speaking of the government, uh, the telecom industry of course is very highly regulated uh, and uh, policy is changing every day as we speak and is a very closely watched space. Uh, perhaps any changes that you want to see in terms of government regulation to make doing business in this space easier? 
Look, it has to only thing government should do to make it less regulated. <laughs> if they okay. make it less regulated, okay. industry will grow, grow better. Okay. But certain kind of regulations are necessary because it deals with spectrum, it deals with pricing, uh, which is uh, tariffs, mm. which is important to public. So certain regulations would be there, but I think less amount of regulations is always better for the industry. Okay, and you are one of the largest players when it comes to working with the government. They're a huge client for you. Yeah, of course. So we are supplying to different government projects. Uh, three or four major projects we have for defense services for under the program, the Network for Spectrum program. We are implementing a, a large capacity fiber optic transport network for government, uh, for the defense forces, network management system for them, uh, microwave radio network for them. So these are the kind of projects we have for Army. Same point of time, couple of uh, projects we have got for Bharatnet, which we are implementing in the states of Jharkhand as well as in Punjab. So we have a good good order book from government. The total order book uh, to HFCN, either for government or for private players, exceeds about eleven thousand crores as on today. Okay, uh, you have exposure as far as you know. You were talking about uh, government, defence, uh, railways, etc. Uh, are you looking at changing the composition of that order book going forward? Look, you know, we have started working for railways also, hmm. particularly railway communication field. Uh, we are implementing quite a bit of railway communication projects, where we are not working directly with railways, but there are turnkey contracts given by railways to turnkey contractors who build railway lines, electrification, communication included. So some such companies who have got turnkey contracts have downloaded their communication part of their network to us, which includes companies like Larson & Tubro, Alstom of France, which includes China Rail, and we are implementing these networks not only in India but abroad also. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, uh, you do have a substantial portion, if I can call it that, of your revenues that come from global markets as well. You're supplying to a lot of countries. Just run us through your plan there. Uh, for FY20, maybe what sort of changes we can see when it comes to exposure to global markets? Look, in global markets, uh, we have been supplying fiber optic cables till now. And uh, last couple of years, our capacity was not enough to cater to the global market because our demand of local customers was so high. Mm -hmm. Now with expanded capacity, we would be exporting more. Mm -hmm. We have been exporting fiber optic cable to about 30 to 40 countries. And we want to increase our presence. What we have done, we are uh, starting our representative offices or uh, agents or distributors in different countries in different parts of the world to increase our presence, increase our sales. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, in railway, we have started working abroad. We have got two projects, one in Mauritius in, and one in Dhaka. Mm -hmm. Again, through those turnkey contractors, where we are implementing communication network. The new products which we have designed, like Wi-Fi system, we would be exporting. So increasing number of uh, items and increased revenue would be there in exports from our company in next two to three years. Uh, for anyone who is involved in a high growth industry like yourself, uh, the question we always love asking is how you train manpower because a skilled manpower is the need of the day, uh, particularly when you're talking about future technology, you're talking about data, you're talking about uh, you know, uh, other forms of technology and the telecommunications industry. Uh, do you find it easy to access this manpower? Is it, you know, how much are you training them? How much are you reskilling and upskilling your employees? You know, uh, it's not that difficult to find good technical manpower in India. Okay. Uh, good That's engineers good are available. Good Thank engineers you. are available, and not only us. You know, global companies are hiring technical manpower from India. Okay. Thousands of Indian work in the global telecom companies, either India or abroad, on the different aspects of technology. Sure. So what we do, we have two pronged approach. One, we hire freshers, mm -hmm. then train them. Uh, for example, uh, today itself we have uh, about 30 freshers joining as engineers in our organization. Mm -hmm. So every year we hire freshers and then train them. And uh, slowly they become an you know, integral part of the company in different, you know, different departments of the company. One year their training is for every department, then they get absorbed in sure. a particular department. Similarly, the existing manpowers, we have a continuous learning and development program. We have a special department in the company which is busy in L&D in this learning and development only. Okay. They're constantly trained in different education institutes, our own internal trainers, different kind of uh, uh, trainers we get from different technology institutes also who come in our company and train them. This is a continuous process. Sure. And uh, you know, this is absolutely important in our kind of industry. But technology is changing so fast, if you don't 
keep our manpower updated, then we would be left behind. Okay. It's very important. Absolutely. So let's then close this conversation by talking about uh, your outlook in terms of growth. Uh, you've seen phenomenal CAGR growth over the past couple of years, between 12 to 15 percent almost year on year. Uh, what's the future looking like? Look, you know, our growth has been very good. Uh, if you look at uh, last three quarters of the current year, or even year before that, the growth has been pretty good. Uh, we have shown our in the quarter to quarter basis, very good growth in last year. Current year also, since our order book is so good, we expect numbers to be uh, even better. As I said, order book is exceeding 11,000 crores. So a good order book would always mean good quantum of execution also. Absolutely, and wish you all the very best. Thanks Thank for you. taking the time on the Thank show. You. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right, that's our show tonight. If you have any feedback for us, we love hearing from you. The viewer, do get in touch. Leaders of Tomorrow Times Group .com is our email ID on social media. Tweet at me at Sunanda underscore J or LOT underscore ET now, which is our official Twitter handle. On Facebook, we're at Leaders of Tomorrow on ET now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.